Welcome. This is 49E9 and this is electrical field due to a continuous charge distribution. What we're picturing is a cloud of charge and there's so many little charges in here that it's a distribution. Each little cube of this distribution has a certain little bit of charge inside it and that has a certain separation from and direction towards the point of interest. And so each little cube creates a vector, an electric field vector. And our job is to add up all these electric field vectors from the different volumes of the cloud. At first glance it looks complicated. It turns out as usual in physics we're going to use symmetry to simplify things. Um, so we say we divide the continuous charge distribution into small elements containing a little bit of charge delta Q. The electric field due to one of the charge elements is given by Ke delta Q over R squared. That's the magnitude multiplied by the unit vector in the right direction. The total electric field is the sum of all these little bits um, and uh, just looking at this that should be a delta Q there and so we get in the limit the delta Q goes to DQ and we have E is equal to the integral of KE DQ over R squared times the unit vector R hat And so we have an example of this. So let me step through this. Consider a rod with a uniform charge of 9 coulombs. The rod lays along the x-axis. So there's my x-axis. And this is, uh, let's put it over here. So put it down here. Q is equal to 9 coulombs. And the rod extends from plus 3 meters to plus 7 meters. Use the method of calculus as shown in physics class, that's what we're doing today, to determine the electric field at point P which is located at plus 1. So here's my point P and it's at plus 1 meters. So there's my origin there. Um, I'm assuming it's a positive charge, so my electric field will be in that direction, E. Um, that direction. This is positive here. So, how do we do this? Well, conceptually we recognize that this little bit of charge here is going to create a big electric field because it's close by. And this little chip bit of charge here is going to create a little bit of electric field because it's a long way away. And that's the issue. We've got to integrate over that length to take into account all the differing strengths of electric field because of the different separations from the point of interest. Well, my equation, of course, is E is equal to the integral of Ke dq over r squared times r hat, if I want that. And this is all in a straight line. So basically what I can say is, oh, e is equal to the integral, sorry, get rid of that, is equal to the integral of ke dq over r squared, and we'll worry about the, the unit vector at the end. And then I say, OK, um, I don't know how to do this because I don't know how to integrate R squared with respect to dq. And so it's a pretty standard problem. And the way I resolve it is I go to physics and I say, let's imagine a little slice. And this little slice as a charge of dq but it has a width of dr. And I can say, oh, my 
little bit of charge in my slice is going to equal the slice width times the linear charge density. How many coulombs per meter times the width in meters? Well, dq is equal to the slice width, which is, uh, sorry, uh, uh, dr times the linear charge density. How many coulombs per meter? Oh, it's q over l. We didn't define l, but let's do it now. It's there, q over l. So, having determined this relationship, I can then substitute in for here. And I say, well, in that case, then, E is equal to the integral of KE over R squared. And rather than DQ, I'm going to put down Q over L dr. And let's take out the constants. K is a constant. Q is a constant for this question. L is a constant for this question. The integral of R squared dr. So E is equal to K E Q over L. It's going to be the integral of R to the minus 2 dr. Which equals K E Q over L. And what would that be? That would be 1 over minus r. Increase the power by 1 and put it in the denominator. And this is going to equal ke for q. I know the value of q is 9. And then for l, I know the value of l is going to be 7 minus 3, which is 4. And then, oh, my limits. So here's a bit of a sticking point for, for people. The limits are not the distance of the first and last slice from the origin. The limits are the distance of the first and last slice from the point of interest. So there's one limit, and here's the next limit. So the limits are not 3 and 7. They are... 2 and 6 because my point of interest is 1 meter from the origin I could even have my point of interest here beyond the rod and again you'd work out the distances of the nearest and furthest slice from that point of interest so if I look at this this is going to be minus 1 over 6 minus minus 1 over 2 which equals 9 over 4 ke and this is going to be 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6 is going to be 2 over 6 so I think I can squeeze it in e is equal to uh, let's look 18 over 16, uh, 24, ooh, 24 ke, which equals 0 0.75 ke newtons per uh, coulomb. And its direction, well, looking at the way I've drawn the diagram. With the assumption I made about positive charges, it would be my uh, r hat would equal minus 1i plus 0j plus 0k. So if I want the whole thing, I would say my vector e would equal, simply take your magnitude, 0.75ke, and then multiply it by a unit vector minus 1i plus 0j plus 0k 
and the answer would be in newtons per coulomb. So vector form on the left and the scalar form on the right. That's a classic question. I very, very, very often ask it. I change the numbers and I change the geometry a bit, but it's, it's always a straight line. It's always a rod on a line. But sometimes I put the point of interest to the left of the rod and sometimes I put the point of interest to the right of the rod. And um, it's a bit of a set piece. So there we have it.